Welcome back to our video module on statics. Today we're going to continue our discussion on submerged plates. However, on our past discussion, we looked at just rectangular plates. I'd like to open things up a little bit and say what happens if we start looking at curves. So let's redraw that pedestal that we had. Let's, re let's redraw the whole thing and change the rules, all right? We're going to have our typical lake, okay? But instead of a nice flat surface, we're gonna we're gonna roughen up a little bit. We're gonna have a pedestal here that's curved. Now, a lot of the same tricks, they're not gonna work. They're not gonna help us out. We do know, let's I mean we do know the pressure is um, gamma times D, which is um, the, uh, sorry, the specific weight of, of the water, and gamma, specific weight of the water times the depth. So we know it's going to increase linearly, but unlike before, we don't have a linear decrease in, or increase in depth. So we're kind of stuck here. So I'd like to propose, I'd like to see if we could work through this. One of the things that we could do, let's go with what we do know. We know that if we have a vertical surface, we know what the pressure is. So we know that right here, uh, let's let, let's we know that that pressure is going to be like, you know, like this, right? Pressure is going to increase, and and we, if we know the depth, and we know this height and this height, um, let's go ahead and get get some labels. We know the depth at A and the depth at B, we can figure out what this pressure is right here. And in addition, we know that um, we know that there's going to be a certain pressure being exerted at this area. So we're good there. We're doing really well. Well, the next thing we're going to do is let, let's take a look at this space and see if we can turn it into a free body diagram. All right. What we're really looking for is, um, is let's say this. We're really looking for how much force is being applied. Okay, that's that's our end goal. However, if we can make a free body diagram, let's say we know what this curve is, we know you know basically how it functions. We can figure out, or we we know what what it follows. We can figure out where the centroid is of this shape. So this centroid of this shape in here, we can figure out if we know this curve. We know how to do integration, or we can do it by parts, or, or we can do it by, you know, uh, composites. However, and we know that this space has a weight. We'll call that W, and then we'll we'll call this uh, pressure vertical and pressure horizontal. We'll say. Um, and we're really artificially separating those into components. It has a weight. Well, we know that there's also going to be a reaction force. If we're going to treat that red shape as a free body diagram. Let's uh, let's 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 redraw it over here. We're going to have the pressure vertical. We're going to have the pressure horizontal. We're going to have the weight. And finally, and possibly most importantly, we're going to have R for reaction. Now, remember what our goal was. Our goal was to find this shape right here. Well, take a look carefully. This vector, or this force, plus this force, plus this force, they're all going to add to equal this reaction. Well, that's the same as the force we're looking for. So we know that this reaction equals the total hydrostatic force on this surface. Now, that said, um, this we can find. We have the pressure. This we can find. We have the pressure. And this we can find because we have the area in here, which would mean we'd have the volume. 
we could find the weight. This is a technique to use when you have funky shapes, say in dams, funky shapes that um, you need to figure out the reaction force at a certain location. I look forward to trying these out of problems and I'm sure I'll post some future video modules where we look at hydrostatic pressures with real problems to sort out um, how to do this. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you on our next